Here's another example of how to find confidence intervals for means, but this time it is the calculator edition. So if you, you know, most of these uh, stats videos that I've been making, a lot of them have a way to find these values using your calculator. So I want to focus on how to find the confidence interval for a mean using your calculator. Now, I am focusing also on large samples. Okay, if you have a sample that is not large, if it's considered small, then you should not use the same um, calculator function that I'm about to use. And the reason I know that I'm using large samples is because my sample size is greater than or equal to 30. If I have a sample size that is less than 30, I want to use a different function. So keep that in mind if you're watching this video. Make sure that, make sure that you are um, you have an example that has a large sample. Okay. I'm not even going to look at the formula for confidence intervals. I'm just going to go straight to the calculator and show you how you can find it. So let's read the example first. A random sample of 31 8-ounce servings of different juice drinks has a mean of 99.3 calories and a standard deviation of 41.5 calories. Find a 95% confidence interval for the mean calories per drink. Now, if you're in my math class, you should be able to find confidence intervals by hand and by using the calculator. So really, the calculator should only be used to, as a check to make sure that you did things the right way. Um, but I'm going to show you how to find a confidence interval for a large sample, uh, confidence intervals for means for a large sample, um, using your calculator. Well, the first thing I need to know is what is my sample size? Well, my sample size is 31. Right here it is. Then the second thing I need to know is what is my mean? Well, the mean or the sample mean is 99.3 calories. I also need to know the standard deviation, which is 41.5 calories. And finally, the confidence level. Okay, my confidence level is equal to 95%. Now I'm ready to go to my calculator. So let's pull my calculator up. I'll scoot it over here a little bit so I can still see my values. And here's how you get to confidence intervals on your calculator. Hit stat and then go over to tests. Okay, we're not really doing a test, but this is confidence intervals and hypothesis tests go together. So this is a test. Now because I have a large sample, I'm going to go down to number 7. I am using and making a Z interval. If I did not have a large sample, I would use a different kind of interval. In fact, I would use something called a T interval, which is right below it. But I am not using a T interval. My sample size is large, so I'm going to use a Z interval. So I can hit enter, and it brings up this menu. Well, the first thing that's highlighted or could be highlighted is data. Well, I don't have the raw data. What I have are statistics. This over here is not the raw data. I just have the summary statistics. So I want to go over on my menu and highlight stats and hit enter. And then fill in all of the appropriate statistics. My standard deviation is 41.5. My sample mean is 99.3. My sample size is 31. And my confidence level is 95% or 0.95. You always want to write it as a decimal. So if this had been something else, I would need to change it to 0.95. Now I just go down to calculate and I hit enter. And huzzah, there it is. I now have used the calculator to give me my interval. Uh, right here are my two values, 84.691 and 113.91. Now, if you've got me for a teacher, and probably just about any other teacher that is teaching statistics, they're going to want you to write your answer for this confidence interval in a complete sentence. And there's three things that should always be in there in, in, a, in a confidence interval answer. The confidence level, the interval itself, and the context of the problem. So here we go. I would say this. I am 95% 
confident that the mean calories per drink is between 84.691 and 113.19 calories. I'm being slightly redundant there by, by saying calories twice, but there it is. I've included all three things for my confidence interval. Don't forget, you need to include the confidence level, which is right here, 95%. You need to include the interval itself, which is right here, 84.69 to a 113.91. And then finally, the context of the problem. And I've done that by talking about calories per drink. So hopefully this helps you. And remember, this is for large samples. Confidence intervals for means when you have a large sample. And this is how to find it using the calculator. You should be able to use, find the confidence interval by hand and use the calculator as a check. Hope this helps.